Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. Every day, God's people should be talking about the goodness of God. Every day, we should be talking about what God has done. In a time when we are inundated with bad news, in a, in a world where it seems we can get so consumed and so concerned about all the bad things going on, the Lord's people must constantly go back to this, who God is and what God has done, because that's faith increasing. You see, your words tell on you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if God is big in your heart, you're going to speak about him. You're going to talk about the greatness and goodness of God. And I would say this as well. Those words have power. They have power in the lives of other people who listen to you. They have power in your own life. Because when you start talking about the goodness of God, it's a reminder of who he is and what he's able to do. It increases your faith to believe him right where you are. In Acts chapter number 21, we return to the Apostle Paul and to the missionary team. When we last left them, uh, their final words were, the will of the Lord be done. And of course, the will of the Lord included things that were wonderful and also some things that were difficult, but they were accepting that as being God's choice for his servant. Verse 15 says, and after those days, we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one Manon of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. I love so many things about this verse. Now, the Bible says that he declared particularly. He didn't talk in generalities. We say things like, well, the Lord's been good. How? Uh, God has answered prayers. Which ones? We talk in, in so many generic terms at times about the greatness of God, but we should speak specifically, personally, definitely, in the words of uh, Acts 21, verse number 19, particularly about what God has done. And then notice, he didn't talk about what he had done. He talked about what God had done. He didn't talk about what he had accomplished. He talked about the work of the Lord. He didn't seek to get credit. He sought to give glory. And notice that when he gave glory to God, others responded by glorifying God. Because the Bible says in verse 20, and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord. You see, when you begin to give God glory, others will soon give him glory as well. They will be attracted not to you, but to the Christ in you. They will begin to admire not what you have done, but in the words of Acts 21 verse 19, what things God had wrought. Now, this particular expression is not new. This is not the first time we find this in Scripture. In fact, the first mention of a phrase similar to it is found all the way back in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers. If you go back to Numbers chapter number 23, you'll find a preacher. He's backslidden, but his name is Balaam. And Balaam uh, said some amazing things about the Lord and the Lord's dealings with his people. Even a backslidden preacher can speak the truth. So in Numbers 23 verse 19, he gives this statement, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So Balaam understood who God was, but not only who God was, what God had done. Listen to verse 23, Numbers 23, 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? If you're looking at your copy of Scripture, you'll see at the end of Numbers 23, 23, there's an exclamation point. 
I wish I could read this like he said it. All the emotion, all of the passion and heart. What if God wrought? Think about all God has done in your life. And then don't just think about it. Talk about it. Open your mouth. A good word still makes the heart glad. There is power in praise when we begin to talk about what God has done. It's fascinating, but the context of Numbers 23 is a very dark time in Israel's history. There's a great deal of opposition against them. And yet, Balaam understands and discerns that even at that juncture, there is no enemy stronger than Israel's God. Uh, Listen, friends, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I know things are bad. I know the news is negative. But the Lord's people ought to be talking about what God hath wrought. Then, when you return to the book of Acts, earlier in the book, we find the same expression, or at least a similar expression. In Acts chapter 14, in verse number 27, when the missionary team returned, the Bible says, And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. They didn't talk about their work. They talked about God's work. They didn't talk about what they had accomplished. They talked about what God had accomplished. You see, the way you speak about the Lord, the way you speak about what is going on in your life, reveals whether God is really big to you or not. Sometimes we speak in ways where uh, we give the impression we're the big ones. We're the ones in charge. We're the ones getting it done and making it happen. Friends, we're nothing. What hath God wrought? Across the page, Acts chapter 15, verse number 12, Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Wouldn't it be wonderful if not only we were talking about what God had done in our lives, but others could so see the Lord in us that they would begin talking about what God has done in our lives? Would it be great? If we lived in such a way so people who observed us would have to say, this is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. And so the great lesson, the great takeaway today is that we must speak about what things God had wrought. That's the expression in Acts 21, verse number 19. And I'll give you two simple ways to to employ this today, two simple ways to put this into practice. The first is by testimony. Speak it to others. Talk to others today about the goodness of God. In the car with your family, around the dinner table, uh, speaking with business associates on your break, uh, wherever you can, to whomever you can, on your social media, give testimony. Talk about the goodness of God. And then, not only through testimony, but through thankfulness. The testimony goes to people, but the thankfulness goes to God. Uh, Take some time today in your prayer time, devotionally, not to ask Him for anything, but just to thank Him just to praise God for who he is and what he has done. And here's what I think you'll find. When you begin talking about what God has done, first of all, God will get the glory. He's worthy of it, and he will be pleased. Secondly, you will be encouraged. Your faith will be encouraged. Your your spirits will be lifted heavenward because you're setting your affection on things above. And thirdly, others will be influenced and affected by it. Lost people will be more open to the gospel. Uh, backslidden believers that you may be around will be reminded of the goodness of God in their life. Other Christians will be lifted up and exhorted because you're pointing them toward the Lord. Let's not just talk about politics and current events and the economy and everything else today. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about what God has wrought. Though no more scripture is being written, The story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why enjoying the journey exists to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. 
we pray that you truly will enjoy the journey. But we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.